Welcome to the Price of Existence web series, episode 11. I'm Skylar Thomas, and today we're looking at three different animals, the loggerhead turtle, the gray nurse shark, and the tiger shark. To do that, we start in Sydney, Australia, at the Manly Sea Life Sanctuary, where they lock me in with these terrible, horrible, deadly, man-eating sharks. We could build up anticipation for the rest of the episode, like Discovery Channel, building on fear and the anticipation of coming face to face with this deadly predator. But the truth is, we were face to face half the time, and it really is no big deal. In fact, being Mr. Observant, as I sometimes am, it was the back of my head meeting the shark's face, and I was still fine. Having said that, you should try to be more aware of your surroundings than I was, and I wouldn't recommend that with a great white shark. As great as these sharks are, I have to admit that the face isn't exactly going to get it in the front market of being the next stuffed animal. It's that same face, or I should say fear of that face, that just about sent this shark into extinction. You may have noticed in the footage how the shark doesn't move a whole lot cruising, floating, hovering. Well, combine an animal that doesn't move very much with a fearsome face, and you've got a prime target for trophy hunters, especially in the Jaws era. I mean, it was a massacre. You're talking about people just swimming right up next to these sharks and blasting them in the head, then going back on land and showing everybody that they're ridding the ocean of these terrible threats to mankind that to date have not posed a threat to man ever. And this species still has not recovered. But why? Well, before we find out why the numbers haven't improved, first let's find out why it hovers around like that. The grey nurse shark is the only known species of shark um, that is able to use a gulping of air technique at the surface to assist with buoyancy. By gulping air at the surface, this enables the shark to sit motionless in the water. Um, you can see bubbles trailing out of the gills while the animal is regulating the amount of air that's passing through their oh, stomach. Okay. So I've personally seen it myself with a couple of the individuals here. It's, it's amazing sight. But holding still, floating, doesn't seem like a good way to catch prey. How does that work? Yeah, they're just very still in that current. They sit in a current, they're motionless, they don't make, mu make much movement at all, and they just wait for the opportunity pre to present itself. And um, another feature that these, um, these sharks have is, like all sharks have this ability, is they have a very unique jaw structure in that the upper jaw is not attached to the skull, enabling it to extend past the mouth. So. Um, as with the grey nurse shark, they can extend their jaw up to 10 centimetres forward and using those razor sharp teeth, they can thrust that jaw forward and grab onto prey. So it's kind of like luring the prey into a state of not being aware of the danger. Yeah, for sure. And the you current know, just yeah. brings it toward the yeah. shark and then snap. Snap, it's gone, yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it truly is an amazing um, behaviour to, to watch. You know, I just finished an episode about how smart sharks are and this guy goes and runs into a wall while he's eating. Great. Now for the harder question. If an animal is critically endangered, why isn't it being protected? So the gray nurse sharks are one of our most important projects. They're, they're critically endangered. Um, there's less than 500 of them left on the east coast of Australia. So with such few protections in place, um, it's vital that they have a safe place to be bred, to be studied, um, and hopefully to be preserved. Uh, the government has very, very poor protections in place. Uh, they acknowledge only a few of their critical habitats. In fact, between Byron Bay and uh, Jarvis, 
Bay on the south coast, I think they acknowledge that only around eight habitats as critical for that shark. And in all of those habitats, uh, people, while they're not allowed to fish from anchor, they're still allowed to troll through there with bait. So it's um, quite common for the grey nurse sharks to be hooked, uh, to be injured, and um, we find a lot of them in the wild with hooks in their mouths. So the fact is, if they're not bred in captivity, um, they're on the way out. They need to be saved. You can learn more about Australia's current government's war on the environment in the bonus footage. But for now, let's get back to some fun stuff. After all, these guys are trying to help animals. This is Dave. He's super cool. But I didn't understand his behavior, so I got a little nervous when he would spin around and stick his head in areas that made me a little worried, especially when he opened up his mouth. But turns out I had nothing to worry about. Tell me about the behavior of the turtle. <laughs> so Dave's spinning game. So that's the spinning game is something you'll see turtles do uh, either to bond, um, especially even during mating. Um, typically what they'll do is one turtle will come in, kind of slap the shell of the other turtle, and they'll throw themselves and just spin like a top on the spot. And the other one will indulge in this and then they're, they're spinning around each other. Um, our turtles have uh, really come to appreciate us in the aquarium and um, you know they love a scratch, they love a cuddle and if they think you're a good bloke they're going to want to play the spinny game. Um, so what was happening when you were rubbing Dave's shell there, in between each segment of his shell uh, is where they grow apart. You know, it's how the shells are able to grow with them. And in those lines, uh, any kind of like algae or growth that gets in there causes them to itch. So when you're rubbing it, that's just like a dog getting the best scratch of his day right down on the back. He's absolutely loving it, which makes you the next best friend. And that means let's play this mini game. So what's my excuse for bringing tiger sharks into this? Well, we've got a tiger shark and turtle interaction. Many of you probably already know that tiger sharks have teeth and jaws that can saw right through a turtle shell, but the turtle has its tricks as well. I was fortunate enough to meet Randall O'Rouse, the founder of Protoma, who shared some incredible footage with me from the Cocos Islands. Well, um, the tiger shark doesn't always win. You know, the tiger shark has to hunt down these turtles. And turtles also have strategies to avoid getting eaten. Because otherwise, you know, they'd all get eaten. So, so what we're seeing here is a, a real interesting strategy of the turtle. He's actually using two strategies to avoid capture by the shark. So, for instance, the shark comes here with his mouth like this horizontally. And there's a turtle out here. The shark can easily bite onto this turtle and bite right through it like a cookie. But as we can see here, what the turtle does is it turns sideways and it shows its shell to the shark. And he uses it, literally speaking, as a shield. So the shark can't bite into the shield. He can't open his mouth wide enough to bite into the got this vertical. Big, broad surface. Right, and he just can't get into it. You can see how he's trying to. So the shark retreats and he's doing a second attack. And then we can see the turtle doing strategy two, which is getting close to the shark so the shark can't close in. The shark can't turn sharp enough to catch the turtle. So that's why they keep on going in circles because, you know, that's the turtle's way of trying to get away. All right, that's it for today's episode. You'll want to tune in again next Sunday as I look at three more animals in the food chain. The white shark, pinnipeds, and orcas. And if you didn't get enough of a shark fix today, you can always check the bonus footage links in the description below. See you next time.